Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, sponsored by Arnold Clark. It's Wednesday. Barry Ferguson, Tom McManus and Alan Ruff are here with me. And we're going to be reading out lots of your messages across Facebook and YouTube. Thank you to everyone who's joined us, followed us, liked and shared. And of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We really are uh, delighted that you've joined the football family. We've got the quiz coming up. We have a one-to-one -one with Dundee United striker Lauren Shanklin getting his take on when they eventually kick a ball. Dundee United in the Premiership and his own ambitions. So that's certainly worthwhile having a look at that. The guys are looking in tip-top fashion. Uh, Ruffy, what have you been up to today, son? Uh, well, as I said yesterday, fortunately enough for us all, this weather is particularly nice and uh, just basically out in the garden. But as, as you can tell, day, day in, day out, and running out of things to do. Hedges have been cut. Painting's been done, you know, so uh, unfortunately for the, the two pheasants that are running about my garden, one of them is about to get a bow and arrow, you know, <laughs> if I can catch it. <laughs> and, for, and for the benefit of people who actually really defend pheasants to the full, Ruffy's only kidding, he's not going to bow and arrow a pheasant, it's as simple as that. Uh, had, Ruffy, had Ruffy been living in East Colbride, that's a different matter completely because it's legal <laughs> to actually bow and arrow a pheasant up there. Uh, Tam, I'm a bit worried about your generation because I see things on social media, lots of young, hip people getting together and disobeying the laws. Uh, have you been staying in? Have you been isolating? No, I have. I've been doing everything by the rule book, as you, you know me, Peter. Um, I'm actually I'm just looking at Ruffy's face here. You, you know, remember the film Something About Mary? Remember the old woman yes. that was in it with the, with the dog? <laughs> <laughs> Ruffy is now starting to resemble her. <laughs> he does actually. Let, let uh, face with that tan. Absolutely. He also uh, he also resembles uh, the guy when um, what's her name chaps the door and he opens it. Anyway, that's another story. Uh, Baz, uh, you're short ten thousand pounds, and there might be an update on that. But that's a great figure. You must be pleased. Yeah, Peter, man. Uh, if I'm being honest with you, I was I was surprised. But listen, it's it's a great cause, as we all know, and. Hopefully we can get a wee bit more, but £10,000, delighted with that, uh, and we'll see what the next couple of days brings us. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks to Brian, who's out there in Italy, doesn't want to obviously uh, be known, doesn't want any kind of, uh, you know, adulation for this. He just wants the, the money to go to the NHS Scotland. Barry came up with the idea. And if you want to bid for Barry's shirt from that game against France in 2007 with the captain's armband, and, of course, with the cap to commemorate, there it is there, uh, then all you have to do is try and top £10,000. The bid can be made studio at plzsoccer.com. So, good luck with that. Uh, what about the quiz? Here's today's question. Stuff for us all. Can you come up with a tournament the year? Uh, we'll give you the answer before we go away. There's a one to one with Lauren Shanklin on the way. Uh, well, UEFA had the first of two meetings this week. Everybody hanging on their every word with regards to what's going to happen over the next couple of months. Will the leagues be called? Uh, how will they uh, be involved, the winners of each respective league, <coughs> in uh, the process of European competition? Gabriel Antoniazzi, a reporter, explains it. UEFA have said leagues can end early in special cases when they have no representatives left in European competition. The Belgian and the Dutch divisions are set to be cancelled on Friday after the Dutch Prime Minister banned football until September. The big five leagues aim to restart in summer before a condensed Champions and Europa League in August. But smaller leagues, such as Scotland, Austria and Switzerland, where cancelling the season can save costs, being forced to wait in limbo for August football may have dire financial implications. There may also come a point where governments take the situation out of UEFA's hands by banning football, even behind closed doors, as First Minister Nicola Sturgeon has already suggested. If that happens, UEFA will have a huge problem. So, there you have it. Um, now, I don't think Scotland will be a special case. 
Um, but remember, you've got to try and read between the lines on this one. This is going to be really difficult, Ruffy, you know, trying to drag it out all the way to the summer. Uh, you know, and some people might think, you know, we're bleating on about it because we've been talking about it for so long. But you can listen to the football authorities all you like. There's the government and the medical advice and Scotland ain't opening up soon. No, and that's why we need uh, UEFA to stop, you know, getting running circles here and actually talk about the teams the likes of Scotland and Holland and Austria and give us a definitive of what we can do because obviously I don't think the SPFL will do anything until they get a directive for them uh, and that statement there. We, we have a team still in Europe and that's Rangers, you know, so I don't know if that would uh, hinder us calling it a bit early. I think... I think the whole SPL want to call it early. I mean, they've called all the other divisions, so you would think automatically once they've been given the nod. But that nod has to be there is no punishment to any other clubs uh, to play European football. That, that's the only way I can see the SPFL calling it. If, if they actually physically say, if you call it now, you will not be hindered by your teams in Europe next year. And then it's just an automatic shout. Yeah, I mean, lots of fans here coming on board. John McLean says, um, obviously can't wait to complete the quadruple treble. Well done, UEFA. Now, this is off the back, obviously, uh, Tam McManus of Neil Lennon released a, a video on uh, Celtic's club channel yesterday, late on. Um, but uh, again, the real content here is basically they want to get back playing football. It, it, it's the usual stuff. If we can go back and play the games, I think, we have to underline that everyone at the club, the players, myself, my backroom staff, the fans want to play the games. Whether that can be achieved or not is another thing. So, uh, you know, sooner or later, someone is going to come out and just tell the truth and say, this isn't going to happen. Yeah, I, th I, th I don't think... We we've been consistent on the show, Peter, uh, for a number of weeks now. That none of us think the season's going to um, be finished. I think somebody's got to make a decision now and just say, listen, you know, it's not going to be confirmed because it could be August, September, October, it could be next year. No one knows and everybody's just sitting in limbo just now, you know, in terms of when, when are we going to start back. Everyone wants the games finished. Every single club wants to complete the league, but I just don't know how you can do that now. You've called the lower leagues uh, and you're going, you know, they've gave champions and relegations in the lower leagues and you're going to continue to play in the Premier League. I just don't get that at all. I think you've, all four leagues have got to be the same. And, I think and as we keep call, call a top league as well. Yeah, and as we keep saying, Barry, the reason why they're doing this is they're hanging off for as long as possible to work out the financial implications. <laughs> That's the way I see it. Yeah, Peter, I, I agree with you. But look, I'm totally agree with what Tam says. You can't call the Championship League One and League Two and not call your top league. Look, I, I don't care what anybody says. There's no football going to be played. Nicola Sturgeon came out and says that there's no going to be mass gathering, uh, gatherings for a long time. Um, so, look, even behind closed door, Peter, what if, what if a player... Uh, the, the reason why I'm saying this is, see behind closed doors, if it's going to happen behind closed doors, every single player, every single member of staff, everybody who's involved with both teams has got to get tested. Because me as a manager, I wouldn't let any of my players come in and train or be ready to play unless they've been tested. Because they could go back, give it to their wife, kids, mother or father, and it could snowball for there. So there's big consequences. So listen, get our, get our head around the fact that there ain't going to be any football played this, this season. We'll just need to look forward to next season. Yeah, and with that in mind, um, you know, the Dutch are ready to call their season. Uh, although, I, again, this would have to go before UEFA to assess it all. Um, after the government, Ruffy, extended the ban on major public events till September 1st. And this really backs up what we're saying here. It's September 1st is, you know, that's, that's looking at the games that will start next season. I mean, UEFA are talking about having this big gala day of uh, football, a fanfare of football, all played within a, a certain period of time. But I don't know about you, but I, I don't know. I don't even see that realistically happening in August. Uh, if it does, behind closed doors, and it will be behind closed doors, Ruffy. Oh, no, need, no need to no need to turn your light out. I mean, honestly, talk about talk about going for a slash, Tom. I mean, that's just abrupt, isn't it? I mean, Peter, did you he, pick he, that point up, Tom? I never heard. I get cut off as well, Peter. Sorry, I never heard you. Uh, I was I just, just saying I just, the, the, 
the Dutch FA, <laughs> the Dutch FA are saying that they're not going to kick a ball to September first. UEFA are talking about a, a fanfare of football. Uh, I mean, when's that going to be played? It's certainly not even even in August. And if it is in August, Tom, it's going to be behind closed doors with all the the uh, stringent rules that Barry's just been talking about. Nah, listen, it's, it's, it's not going to happen, Peter. It's, uh, I don't think it's going to happen. We're not going to be kicking a ball here. If we kick a ball in Scotland before August or September, I think we'll have won a watch. I just think this is going to drag on and drag on. We can't risk a second wave of this virus and you know, come, coming out of the lockdown too early. That that would be an absolute catastrophe for everyone, everyone's health. And I think you've got to put health first in, in this situation. Forget about football. Listen, I understand the economics of football and clubs are going to go bust, but health is your wealth, and I think that's got to be the most most important thing at the minute. Yeah. Uh, apologies to everyone there. We lost Ruffy. And Ruffy, I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but there's just a, a little bit of pheasant hair on the side of your mouth. There. I don't know what happened. <laughs> just if you want to you want to clear no, that away before. That's, that's, that's no pheasant <laughs> hair. <laughs> So, so oh, no. you've been, ha- you've been <laughs> hanging honestly, honestly you've been hanging about oh. with Tom Cowan too much. Um, Derek <laughs> Canavan is watching the show from the Philippines, no less. Derek, wow. uh, thank you for joining in with us. Uh, and listen, Tom, you've got someone from Canada you want to mention and, and fire right in here because we actually have mentioned Bobby Jameson before, but yeah. is he, has he done something for the community that you want to mention? Yeah, he has. He's raised a lot of money for, for some of the boys' clubs here. Um, Bobby Jameson, I think over ten thousand pound. He's living in Canada now. He's an, an expat, and uh, you know they're raising a lot of money for uh, for carers as well in, in East Kilbride. Uh, over ten grand uh, split between a couple of charities. So I'd like to give Bobby and all, all the people who've raised money uh, a little shout out because it's a great sum of money and it's going to help uh, a lot of people up here in East Kilbride. So well done, Bobby. Yeah, full marks to you. And also, you can tell everybody was on this. Remember this, Ruffy. Um, Davy Roper says, Peter, does Barry wear any other brand of T-shirt? Um, because every time he comes on, he's always got his wee Nike yeah. there. Uh, Ruffy, do you remember that period where you just wore Ralph Lauren tops? Uh, just these shirts, one or two, the exact same. All I wore was Lacoste. Uh, and, and then eventually... Barry started shopping in other places and you started to copy him to try and roll back the years, <laughs> didn't you? <coughs> yeah, but unfortunately, I can't wear shirts that's, uh, in, in the house here and it's too warm. But uh, no, it's nice and relaxed. But I mean, Barry will have a big contract there. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be lucrative. It'll be a deal. You know, I mean, if you've just got to go with the flow. Yeah, and Derek uh, Duffy, uh, Derek Duffy has said, Back on from Jakarta, uh, which is brilliant. Mm. Uh, well done to Barry Ferguson for doing the shirt donation. I'm a Celtic fan, but Barry Ferguson is a gent. Uh, so what a nice uh, you know, message there as well. And listen, uh, you know, some people have been giving giving me it in the neck. I don't mind if you absolutely can as as long as you you're not abusive. Batter us if you want. Um, we're all we're all into that. We all like a bit of fun uh, as well. So I'm trying to read out as many as uh, we possibly can. Joseph Byrne, John McLean, uh, Barry McHugh uh, comes on. Sir Walter. There's people who use tag names along the way, uh, and we try and give as many of you a mention as we possibly can with regards to Facebook and YouTube. So all the YouTube people, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, as far as uh, we're looking at the leagues and who's going to call something. Uh, of course, Ruffy, explain this one to me. Auchin Lake Talbot have been declared champions of the West Regional Premiership, and I'm looking at it, and they're sitting in third, <laughs> Ruffy. They're third in the league. Now, for the benefit of Motherwell fans who are actually doing cartwheels right now, triple salcos and backflips, could Motherwell or Aberdeen be declared champions of the Premiership? No, I don't think they can, but I think anybody in the juniors know the way it works. Uh, the juniors, if you're a successful team, and the juniors like Auckland Lake are always are. They've got that. They're playing in the real Scottish Cup. They're playing in the, the junior Scottish Cup. There's, there's loads of cups to play in. I think they're actually seven games behind, uh, and I, I think it's co-winning at 11 points ahead. But, uh, you know, the, once they get these games at, at hand, they would win that league quite comfortably. So... No, well done to them, and I think that moves on what we were talking about yesterday, that other pyramid system that's going to happen just underneath the Lowland League. I think most of the junior clubs have all bought into that, so that's another positive step as well. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know if you could hear that there, but it sounded as if uh, Tam had a stomach problem, uh, or was that a car, <laughs> leave, or was, was that a car leaving East Kilbride at, at speed, Tam? 
That was the that wee was wee leaving Ruffy Seuss. <laughs> That's how I had to go off camera. <laughs> oh, that was brilliant. I just heard it there and I thought, oh, what is happening in East Kilbride? There's another run. Uh, anyway, apart from anything else, uh, thanks to everyone who's still messaging us and giving us their thoughts. Uh, of course, uh, there's lots to discuss. And I have to say to you, we've got to get a, a thought on uh, seven years uh, Derek McInnes has been in charge at Aberdeen and it's today. So let's have a look at that record of the Aberdeen boss. It's been seven years today since Derek McInnes took charge of Aberdeen and in his time he's transformed the club from a bottom half side to comfortably the most consistent club outside of Glasgow. When the former St Johnson and Bristol City manager took over at Pataudry, they'd finished in the bottom half four seasons in a row. A year on, he delivered their first piece of silverware in 19 years, the 2014 League Cup, thanks to the penalty shootout victory over Inverness. More success followed with McInnes leading the Dons to four consecutive second-place finishes and taking a side into the Europa League qualifiers every campaign, however always just missing out on the crucial playoff fixture. Eight more Cup semi-finals followed, including 2017, when they were beaten in both showpiece events by Brendan Rodgers' invincible Celtic side. At the halt of this campaign, McInnes insisted his side were on course to achieve their aims, third place and the Scottish Cup. He may have to wait until next year to achieve those goals, but one thing's for certain, with 187 wins in 341 games, boasting an impressive 55% win rate, McInnes has been Aberdeen's best manager since the great Sir Alex Ferguson. How would you assess his time in charge, Ruffy? I, I think Gabriel just summed it up there. You know, I think the record speaks for itself. Uh, we all know uh, that most of the time they're the third team in, in Scotland. Uh, and when you're competing against Rangers and Celtic with the budgets that they've got, you know, to get to cup finals is, is magnificent. You know, to keep challenging sometimes and occasions it's for second place on a year. It was nearly for first place. So, you know, and I know the, the Aberdeen supporters would like a wee bit more, but I, I think the achievements that uh, Gabriel just read out there are, are absolutely fantastic for a team with the budget that they've got. I think the only disappointing, Pierre, I think if you were to ask Derek, the only disappointing be, would be the European in the last two or three years. I, I think he would have expected to do probably be a wee bit better. And I think that's probably when some of the Aberdeen supporters have judged them that they haven't been able to get to that group stage, which we all know that some of the teams that were beating them, they should have beat them, whether it was just because it was at the beginning of the season, they weren't ready. But uh, I think that if you ask Derek, that would be his biggest disappointment. Barry, if I'm going to be brutally honest with you, I, I look at one League Cup over those seven years and I am I being too critical to suggest if Aberdeen had shown just a wee bit more ambition, they could have won a title in the Ronnie Dyla years because Celtic were woeful. Yeah, I think that's some, something Derek will look back on and maybe regret. But look, I look at the bigger pictures. As Gabriel says there, he took over. They were rock bottom, Aberdeen. Um, and for me, it has been a success. Look, Peter, every single summer, it has to do basically a full rebuild because all, always his better players always move on to uh, better clubs. Um, and I spoke to Lewis on a few occasions about Derek and he, he loves playing under him. He, he says he's a very good manager, good man manager, which is important to players. And also he's got a good assistant that Lewis says as well, Tony Doherty, that's good on the training field. So they're a good, they're a good double act to too. So I think in a whole, I think he's been a success up there. I think he's overachieved at times and that's where I think Aberdeen fans need to chill out. Yeah, uh, Tam, every now and then he's, he's had to, you know, look about for loan deals, you know, whether it's a, a, a Matt James Madison. I mean, I thought he was a, a great uh, steal for him. He's, he's had to try and uh, Ryan Christie, someone to supplement the team that probably they couldn't have afforded. Yeah, as Barry said, you, you know, a club like Aberdeen, you're always going to be picked off in the summer uh, by vultures, clubs down, down in England that can pay, pay big money. When you look at Adam Rooney, I think he went to Salford to a League 2 for four or five grand a week. So that, that's what you're up against. I think Derek's done a great job up there. Um, I think his best opportunity, as you said, was the Ronnie Dyla season with Celtic. Where Celtic were really, really poor. They had a real chance uh, at Christmas time. And uh, a person, I thought they bottled it a little bit. But, you know, I think he's done well up there. <coughs> They're in a mini league of their own, you know, outside the Celtic Rangers. Particularly Rangers now who have been heavily backed uh, with Stephen Gerrard as a manager. 
I think third is the best they can hope for in getting to cup finals. And uh, if they can keep continuing, be consistent, finishing third every season and getting to finals, I don't really see where the Aberdeen fans uh, can want any more. Yeah, James Gordon, who is a Celtic fan, says, I think McInnes has been great for Aberdeen. And when he leaves, they'll realise how good he was. Sometimes, you know, uh, you be careful what you wish for. If you want rid of uh, one man manager and then two or three come in uh, and just don't get it together uh, for one reason or another. Here's John Shields. I know you've been asked this question before, Barry, but listen, uh, difficult times. We always like to try and ask as many questions of you guys as possible from uh, the messages that we're getting in. John Shields says, does Barry think his nephew could cross the Ferguson divide and play for Celtic? And you you have had this question before, Barry, but, you know, if somebody came in with an offer, you know, would he consider it? Do, yeah, of course he would consider it, Peter. It's, it's, a, it's a big club. Um, would I talk to him again? Um, I would need to think about that. Uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, listen. I think I think he's done it the right way. I think. But did Barry say? Did Barry say it's the biggest club there? No, it's a I think he did, Ruffy. I think oh, he did. Is it biggest or big? Oh, I no, I, I know what I said. I said it was a big club. <laughs> The headline no, look, Peter, I don't. <laughs> do you know what? He's he's the he's a type of boy that it wouldn't phase him. Do you know that? It wouldn't phase him. It wouldn't bother him about his dad playing at Rangers and he's obviously his uncle playing at Rangers. If it was the right fit for him, Lewis has got to look f out for his own future. Um, so look, if Celtic come in, I think he would have to consider it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean. The difficulty, sometimes going back in time is very difficult when you try and remember the exact facts of a situation. In 2001, when Martin O'Neill made a £6 million bid for you, what was your immediate thought in your family? Did, did, were you tempted at all? <laughs> <laughs> hello? Hello, Barry? You still there? He would have walked over broken glass uh, to save away. a Celtic, Barry. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, Tom, Tom, <laughs> Tom, equally, equally so, you know, when you think about it. I mean, there are people who are absolutely, and I, I think I love it, people who grow up who have supported, for example, Barry, Rangers as a boy, to live out your dream when your brother's been a great player and you get to play for Rangers is magnificent. <clears throat> you know, for other players that, that get there, I mean, for example, you, were, you, you moved to Hibs. If suddenly, if you had screwed the nut and, and you know, and, and stopped being... A bam. Would you have if Rangers if, if, you know it's coming, don't you? If Rangers had come in and said, Look, five million, you're firing in the goals, Tam. We want you in at Ibrox. Would you have would you have jumped? Oh Peter, you know I'm a mercenary. I would have signed for Rangers and Mars if they were giving me twenty five grand a week. Yeah. No yeah. problem whatsoever. Didn't matter who I grew up supporting. I would have signed for yeah. Rangers in, a, in, a, in an instant. Not a problem for me. Yeah. Uh, and I think Peter, a lot of people are... Peter, Peter, can I just say about Kenny Miller? Look, Kenny Miller, I'll tell you one yeah. thing about Kenny. Did they bother Kenny? Didn't bother yeah. him what, one bit whatsoever. And I, I asked him a few times. Are you, are you okay with that? But listen, it never fades, Kenny. Going Rangers, no. obviously I know he moved down to England, then back up to Celtic, moved away again and come back to Rangers. It never phased him and it never seemed to bother him, but I don't know. I, I couldn't, couldn't do it. No. Well, listen, by the way, I admire your honesty. I mean, I was going to say, and I don't want you to take this the wrong way, I was going to say Kenny Miller, he's a level-headed boy. But, that, but some people might say, I'm having a go, you're not level-headed. But Kenny Miller was one of those guys mm. that just thought, ah, it, doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, you know. I'm not having a go at you, that's just the nature of it. <laughs> I, 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 Edinburgh no, you want to have a life, Peter? Yeah. That's no, but you stayed yeah. through here. You stayed aye, through aye, here. Aye. Tom. But he didn't really, yeah. he didn't really grow up with the west of Scotland, you know, bio with the no, no, kind of thing. You know, he was away oh, for yeah. that, which probably helped him a wee bit. Mm -hmm. It's always, it's always handy if you, if you live in Edinburgh, Ruffy, you, you, you kind of avoid the madness of the west of Scotland. I'm only speaking oh. from experience. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there is not maybe madness isn't the right word through in Edinburgh. There is a, a, a competitiveness, you know, and a, you know, a hunger to be better than each other. But I think when you come to Glasgow, it gets bigger than that. You know, it's. Uh, yeah. It's just a tradition that's been there for, for years and years and years, and you can't take the. I think the I think the the biggest part of Peter is there are more Rangers and Celtic supporters than there are Hibs and Hearts. I 
and I think that magnifies it more than anything else. Yeah, James mentioned there, he said, um, Mo Johnson was another one who crossed the Great Divide. Yep, Mo had, uh, Mo also stayed in Edinburgh because I can remember him coming into many an Edinburgh restaurant where he could avoid uh, the craziness. And of course, uh, someone actually came me the other week there, Tam, suggesting that, oh, as if there's no bigotry in Edinburgh. Yes, there is, but it's it's not as... It's not as to the, it's not as at the forefront of everybody's life. I always thought with well, the guys that I hung about with were either hippies or jambos. I mean, yeah. that was it. You never, you, I never even when I played football through there, I never really got any kind of real jip from people. No, listen, I, I, I was at Hibs for seven years and I stayed through <clears> Edinburgh <throat> uh, for two years and bar the odd bampot, you know, you never really get hassled. Uh, I mean, in terms of you're out for a, a out for a pint or a route for something to eat. You know, but obviously it's different. Barry will tell you in Glasgow, he's probably hounded every time out the door and uh, on another Celtic Rangers players. And I don't know how you could kind of put up with that uh, without, without, without yeah. biting right. back. And Barry obviously did bite back a, a couple of times. <laughs> Aye, but you mature as you got older. But listen, Peter, see, I'll tell you, the vast majority of times it's it's a bit of banter. But sometimes yeah. seeing it crosses a line, it does, it does frustrate you. And sometimes you're better just walking away. But... You've got that one or two percent who are absolute idiots that go beyond and say, anything. And, and see and see when you do cross the line, is it hard for you to walk away? <laughs> what, what, what type of question is that? What's that? What's that all about? What do you mean? What do you mean? No, I'm just, I thought Barry was saying when you cross, you sort of lose it. You've got to be prepared to, to walk away and, and not get involved in it. Yeah. Oh, I did well, get into a couple of times, roughly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we all we all know we we go to Christmas parties and we've got to we've got to go somewhere where oh. everybody's safe. Um, also, yeah, I, Tams took the heat away from me. Tams oh, took the heat away from me. <laughs> he, he's uh, he's absolutely fantastic to have at our parties now. Oh, so brilliant. many people want want a banjo. Him. It's unbelievable. Uh, listen, uh, over and above that, the one thing I was going to say there, and, and it brings us back to the point of reading an article today. And this is the one thing that sticks in my throat is some players who sign for clubs, apart from badge kissing, which is a nonsense. Um, the other one is they sign and they go, it's the only club I've ever wanted to play for. I've always been a, a, a Rangers fan, a Celtic fan. The reason why I'm mentioning that is, Tam, I was reading Robbie Keane giving it, uh, you know, big licks about, uh, you know, he was actually a Liverpool fan. But when he signed for Celtic, I can remember it was midnight, I think, they managed to get the deal done and he's given it, you know, I was a Celtic fan as a boy. I just think all that pandering and there's been a few managers guilty of it as well. It's a lot of nonsense. Just yeah. cut out the clap trap. <clears throat> Listen, it's, uh, it's what the fans want to hear. You know, it gets supporters on side straight away, especially, you know, Robbie Keane grew up in Ireland, you know, Celtic supporter, you know, came and said that he was the only club he wanted to play for. Roy Keane was probably the same. Um, when they came up to Celtic, you know, but these guys are, are you know, they're professionals. You know, obviously they they wanted to play for for a team that they they liked growing up, but I don't I don't ever 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 kind of go for that unless you're unless you're a Barry Ferguson or a Paul McStay or somebody like that, and you know you've got a real feeling for the club and and you really really support them all the way up from growing up, then then fine. But no, if you're Robbie Keane and you've had twenty five clubs, but uh, the same as me. But nah, I don't I don't I wouldn't be falling for that if I was a punter. Mm. Yeah, uh, Peter, apparently he was a Liverpool fan. Uh, Peter, I'll get the one that you mentioned. See the badge kissing. Uh, it yeah. used to grate on me. Uh, honestly, I, I'm all for going and celebrate with your fans and your teammates, but see the badge kissing scenario used to crack me up. Don't get it. Yeah. Were you a badge kisser, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> no. Remember, we'll I get that many remember clubs. That. I hate. We can look back on the footage, Tam. Just give us the honest answer. I'm going to check. I, I, I <laughs> so might have a couple of times. I might have. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I can't Der remember. Derry. I've, Derry I've, City. I've maybe done that or something. I've maybe done that or something. <laughs> yeah. Aye. Yeah. Something like that. Well, aye, but... That's all right. That's all right. Eh? That's all right. No What's all right? Barry's done, no kiss Barry, Barry's done that scored against, when he scored against Selly. I'm definitely, I can remember it. Yeah. Um... But oh, did you stay? I don't know. I think I think I think it was about, I think it I think it was for nothing then did you stay on for another goal time? <laughs> <laughs>
Ruffy. That's what Ruffy I was doing. Yeah. I was doing that. I was doing that to Peter and Ruffy when they were up in the stand commentating. <laughs> she, she, no, hey, we we'd left long before that. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, you'll never believe this. This is absolutely fantastic. The, the, do you remember the, the, the 2 2 game, Rangers Celtic at, at Hamden when Rangers uh, won in penalties? Um, I think Tom Rogic put one over the bar and Rangers went on to win and yeah. knocked uh, Celtic out of the cup. Oh, well, the press box. They put everybody in the press box and you, you can be strategically placed in the press box. Either you're on near the Celtic end or you're near the Rangers end, well, we are as far left <laughs> as you possibly can go. <laughs> and they are giving Ruffy and me dogs abuse, Tom. <laughs> They're giving us absolute belters. And and we're working and eventually Ruffy said, are we, are we going to the press conference, right? And, and there's easily 20,000 Rangers fans all singing. And I'm doing this for the typewriter. And he goes, are, you, are we going to the press, press conference? He said to me, what are you typing? I said, nothing. Just keep your head down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was, it was a rock. It was a, hey, Robbie, do you remember that day? I know, that was the last time I stopped, oh. stopped sitting beside you. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. You may get back to commentating. You need oh, to get back to commentating. Oh, uh, listen, I, I would mm. absolutely love it, but it's such is the nature of Scotland. I'm, I'm not going to hide uh, behind the fact that the nature of Scotland is we have a monopoly of, um, you know, one one company from the radio rights, which I think radio is where I love commentating, but we just couldn't compete with BBC for financially. Yeah, absolutely, which is mm. why I've added you to the team, Tom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we couldn't compete with them financially. Commercial radio just didn't have the money that the taxpayer was giving to the BBC. So we were gubbed, you know. But uh, certainly, when you think about it, in the last 20 years of some of the events, Ruffy, and some of the great games, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. to have to have the BBC, and I, I, I admire, there was a guy who commentated for the BBC, and I loved him as a person as well. He was a really nice man, David Begg. David Begg was a thorough uh, professional, and, he, and he, would, he, you know, he would be on European trips. He was a really nice man, great commentator as well. Um, but you wanted competition. You wanted competition from Radio mm. Clyde or, or Real Radio against the BBC. But it's a monopoly now, so you don't. There's no competition for them, and I just think it's a disgrace, uh, you know. But that's just a just a personal opinion. Mm -hmm. No, I actually opened my eyes. Obviously, when I left the football, went into the media, and started going to games abroad. Actually, what amazed me was, as you said, there are all the different companies. They all worked together. They all helped each other. There, there was a there was a bond of let like, if there's something wrong, say a, a cable would come out somewhere or somebody wasn't getting broadcast properly. There, there was people. There was like technicians for other companies coming in and helping the other guys to get it sorted out and keep going, which I, I found absolutely amazing. Yeah, just at that, a cable comes out. Oh, yeah, 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 you know, the, <laughs> the, the, the timing was magnificent. Come on, hey, can you not put this back uh, in? Uh, 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 see, to be honest with you, Peter Albert, see, listen to the games, the commentary's not the same now. It's not the same no, 10, 15 well, years ago. Martin Tyler is is absolutely top drawer. Martin Tyler is, uh, is magnificent. His mm -hmm. preparation, a uh, Bill McLaren. Uh, there are there are I have to say a lot of great commentators out there. I just wish, and I'm only talking from a Scottish perspective. I just wish there was competition. I have nothing against all the BBC commentators. They all they all work hard at their job, but if they had competition, they would really step up to the plate. But they have a monopoly which just completely and utterly rules everybody out. So we just have to grin and bear it. But I'll tell you one thing, whether it was Rangers or whether it was Celtic or whether it was Wraith Rovers, would you believe in the Olympic Stadium at Bayern Munich against Bayern Munich, Hearts and Hibs. I love doing the commentary. I couldn't care who scored. If they scored a great goal, you know, I was all over it. I loved it. I mean, I get excited about it. Um, and, and with memorable days, you know, whether it's Scotland, Henrik Larsson, uh, Nacho Nova scoring the winning penalty, Barry, do you remember that? Fiorentina? Yep, yep. I missed the first penalty, so I was begging yeah. for him to score. Some say for the keeper, right enough. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's always good. It, Barry? Yeah, exactly. It's always good. You didn't. You, you certainly didn't get me excited when you missed it. And always good to hit the ball right down, right down the middle, Tom. It makes it easier for the keeper. Aye, aye. <laughs> but, top uh, bin, top bin. 
<laughs> it was a good save. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And listen, lots of people. Uh, Archie, and that's another one I forgot to mention. There. Robert McGee mentions it, and I think you're right. Mark Archie Terry McPherson. mentioned it. Archie was great. Archie was great as well. And, right. he, you know, go back to the 70s, Arthur, Arthur Montford was great. You know, mm. talk about brevity. My favourite commentary of Arthur's, um, Ruffy, was uh, the 1973 qualifier for the World Cup. It's uh, Scotland against Czechoslovakia. And it's fairly simple. It's Morgan, Jordan, goal. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know exactly what's happened. Morgan's crossed it, Jordan's headed it, bang, it's in the back of the net, you know. Um, there are some great commentaries. Archie's commentary for Dalgleish scoring at Anfield is, is fantastic as well. Yeah, that uh, I had one, uh, just to show you how thorough Archie was, when I was over in America in Orlando, uh, I was at training one day and all of a sudden the boy said to me, there's a boy, Archie McPherson, uh, outside, would like to come and say hello. And I come in, I'm like, how are you doing, Archie? And he just sort of asked me about all the teams, the, the Tampa teams and the, the Washington teams and who was here and who was there. And I never twigged until two years later that the World Cup was going to be in America. And he'd come over and done his research two years before the competition was going to start. Yeah, and did you take him out with Bestie for a night out? Because I know Archie likes a night out. By the no, way. no, no. The night out that night was Sunis, uh, Stratton, and Ian Monroe. And I'll not tell you where we went, but we were a wee bit shocked when Ian turned up with his wife. Yeah. Okay, that's unusual. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's for the late night football show at half two in the morning when Hoffman reveals exactly what happened there. There's nothing worse than somebody telling you a great mouth-watering story there and then you can't actually say it. Uh, also, George uh, Doyle says Jimmy that Sanderson. One. Yeah, Jimmy Sanderson says George Doyle. And another one, Mary McCormick. Mary mentions somebody, Rory Hamilton. Rory's a great lad who uh, commentates for BT and Sky over the last uh, few years as well. Uh, I know Rory uh, well. And listen, we, we want people to get the excitement of it all. That's what we want to do. Uh, coming up in the next uh, couple of minutes, we're going to hear from your man. Um, and that man is uh, Lawrence Shanklin, uh, the striker for Dundee United. We'll hear from him. Uh, of course, uh, this is another day when we look back on certain landmarks, uh, certain dates that throw up, <coughs> things like Derek McInnes, seven years in charge. Uh, and of course, uh, this is a year on from the loss, uh, the tragic loss of a Lisbon Lion, a true great, the greatest ever Celtic captain, Billy McNeil. Billy McNeil uh, sadly uh, passed away a year ago today. Uh, the great thing about it, Ruffy, every time I used to mention to him, I said, you know, we went to the same school. And he said, yeah, but I went when it was a really good school, he says, when it was all boys. <laughs> used, to puff, he used to puff his chest out. You know? <laughs> but uh, but he, he was the epitome of what you would call a captain. Yeah, I would say so. And I've said it all along. He had a fantastic I for a player, uh, when he phoned me up in America, he come to Celtic and you, uh, to believe everything everybody told about him. And you're right, you know, that chest, when you're sitting in that dressing room in the morning at quarter to ten, ready to go along to Barrafield, and he walked through that door with that chest pumped out. I keep saying respect, you know. When I'm always at a football team, and if a manager walks in the door and you, he's got that respect, it's a head start and you've got everybody pulling in the right direction, and Billy McNeil had that. He was an absolute a legend, uh, and a lot of humour as well, and he joined in a lot. But the, the the good thing about it was everybody knew who he was, and same as Big Jock as well, you know, him and Billy, I, I have them both of them up there. Yeah, and of course, Ruffy, you have got that special uh, bit of your own history because you, you played in the team in, in Thistle in 71. I mean... 
Billy at that point was in the middle of nine in a row. They were winning everything. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, did he say? Do you remember anything about that game? Any of the Celtic players were they? Was Billy and the, the guys stunned? No, I always remember any time uh, I spoke to Billy after it. Uh, a lot of people, uh, are the, the modern, they won't remember that Billy never played in that game. You know, Billy McNeil, uh, sorry, Jockstein never picked him. Uh, he left him out. And any time I ever met Billy, he was absolutely dumbfounded. There was no rhyme or reason why he never played that day. And he never, ever forgot that uh, he missed that game. But I, I always remember, I mean, I was only 19 at the time, but I, I just remember when we won the game, every Celtic player came up and congratulated the, the Thistle boys. Nobody walked off the park. And that I think Big Billy had... had installed that in them that, that that you had to be gracious in defeat as well as as well as winning because i remember billy being out there going round all the thistles players shaking their hands and saying well done because i think he knew how much it meant to all of us yeah absolutely great words there about billy mcneil uh, thanks for that ruffy i didn't know that they didn't pick him for the 71 cup final just shows you jogged my memory there uh good call on that one um niall kane says ian crocker is a brilliant commentator ian crocker from birmingham is a brilliant lad great fun great commentator thoroughly professional and of course he's sometimes got his sidekick davy proven which of course uh, I had the great uh fortune to work with davy at radio clyde and at sky he is just well He's up there. Top man for me. Um, lots of tributes. Bob McGee, James Gordon, Stephen Hill, uh, Hugh Hepburn, uh, Jim Colby. Uh, a lot of people, David Russell, a lot of people just paying tribute to Billy McNeil a year on. And I uh, know Martin and the family. Uh, this will be a difficult day for them, but all our best wishes go to them uh, as we are all uh, trying to obey the rules. If you are here with us on the football show Monday to Friday on Facebook, all you have to do is like, share and follow us. I have to say, Tam, it's it's not great news for you uh, because the boys at this point, I'm looking at the date here, Barry, 22nd of April, we'd be heading now to the final month before we all get ready for the Players' Player of the Year night out. It would be fantastic, but that's <coughs> totally kiboshed and Tam misses out on a great night out. I know, Tam. Here, listen, you missed it at great, great times. I don't know when the next one's going to be. I'm, I'm, do you know what? I'm looking forward to the next night out. I've got to be honest with you. It's, oh, is, there, is, there any, is there any chance he's having a, a Zoom night out? <laughs> a Zoom party? I think, I think, yeah, <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Well, to, to, be, to be fair, I'm not, I'm not too sure we're going to have one because one of my old mates, Craig, who's a fitness instructor... <laughs> had a Zoom fitness training session for a collective of people and I have to say it's on the front page of the Sun some unsavoury characters hijacked the fitness campaign <laughs> and it left a lot to be desired I have to tell you so we're, we're not having a Zoom party in case anybody gets a snifter at it uh, anyway, over and above that um, we've got lots to talk about we're going to read out a lot more of the messages as well £10,000 is the latest from Brian. I think Brian might win it with this one. Uh, £10,000 from Brian in Italy, who's going to bid that for Barry. And I think, and I'm going to check with it tonight, uh, if you want to bid more than £10,000 for Barry's shirt, which is the one he wore in 2007 in the Parc de France, it's got the cap in it, it's got the captain's armband. It is a brilliant piece of memorabilia. But Brian is ahead with £10,000 bid. If you want to bid studio at plzsoccer.com and the reason that's up for auction is quite simply Barry wanted to just show his appreciation to the fantastic work of NHS Scotland and uh, there are so many people the doctors, the nurses, the helpers in the background that put their lives on the line to try and save others uh, with this terrible virus so well done to Barry, £10,000 studio at plzsoccer.com if you want to submit a bid higher than that figure uh, let's hear from a man I caught up with earlier, he's red hot, he's a striker, he's at Dundee United, his name is Lawrence Shankland Well I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Dundee United striker Lawrence Shankland um, didn't quite get the title party I think all the guys were hoping for but in the end, do you think it was the right decision Lawrence that United got the title and can look forward to the Premiership next season? I think I can say on behalf of the boys that we'd have rather probably done it on the pitch and that would have been everybody's best way to, to finish the season off and obviously get the title party etc but I feel that overall we can we can be pleased with the season we had we, we did do really well to get ourselves in the position we were in 
and to find ourselves so so far ahead come the end and I think as time went on it was it was like more and more lately that they were gonna to need to make a decision on it and, and probably calling it was the right decision I'd say. Yeah, I, some people thought it was maybe going too quickly when you consider they're still waiting on the on the premiership, but I presume you guys were so far ahead. Was there ever a fear in your mind and the players and the manager that you know maybe they'd say, Listen, this is null and void? That was obviously a worry for us and all the boys were talking in the group chat and stuff and I was saying we really hope that they don't do that. It's either we win the league or we play the games out, and that would have been our preference. But we'll just need to go on with now. But we've been given the title and we're promoted, so we've got a lot to look forward to. Yeah, um, I, I've never actually witnessed a player uh, like yourself. Uh, it, it just seems to be everybody talks about you. Everybody has a say on you as a player. Um, when you were young, did did success come? Or the thought of success come too quickly when you broke into that Aberdeen side? I was obviously young when I when I moved up there. I moved away from home and I think I was just turning 18. Mm-hmm. Moved into live my cell and that. So it was a whole new experience for me. And probably at the time, it was maybe a wee step too much for me. And now I look back, it was, and it was probably three levels above where I was playing. So maybe that was just a wee bit too much. But it was, it was an experience. And to be honest, it never went as well as I thought. But... I've probably learned more for them to, to teach me to where I am now. What's the difference between Lauren Shanklin then, mentally, uh, you know, psycho- psychologically, and of course as a player? I think probably mentally it was just the belief to, to feel like you deserve to be there. That was probably a problem for me as I was younger. I, I didn't really have that, and it was probably something I was missing was a wee bit of that cocky side, and I wish I did have it, but. It just wasn't in my nature and it was something I had to kind of learn myself to, to be more confident and believe in my ability. So that was something I worked on and it seems to have worked coming up to now. And obviously I did always have the ability. I, I got the move to Aberdeen on the back of that. So the ability was there. It was just fine tuning everything else and thankfully enough it's came together. Yeah, you, you've met a few players. You've played with a few in your time. Is there is there one particular player who had that cocky attitude that you wish you had? Um. <sighs> There's, there's a, few, a lot of players, I mean, good players that have, have got, that, got that side to them. I'm not going to actually name any, I don't think, but um, there is, there's, a lot, there's a lot out there that have, that have got it naturally. And unfortunately, I didn't really have it and I had to teach myself it, but I've got there in the end. Yeah, well, here's, here's something that every young player will hang on your every word for. In adversity, when you're in a situation where you're saying to yourself, oh my God, this hasn't worked out at Aberdeen and you're going down the leagues what was the thing, was there a bit of advice that someone gave you that kept you going even though you had your own strength of character? It wasn't really, I just, it was obviously, I was like three months without we a job and ended up getting to September time before I, I signed for the United and I just, I told myself that I was going to be ready for it whenever the opportunity came about, whether it was going to be full time, part time, I'd really limited options at that time, I was just going to take whatever I could get and make the most of it and Thankfully enough, um, Ian McCall and Elk got me in for a, a day's training and decided to sign me and it paid off for, for both of us, I would say. What would you have done if you hadn't made it in football? I had, at that time, I'd went away and I'd learned the personal training course, so I knew I had that as backup and it probably helped me mentally because I knew that like, I had a way of, of making money and getting income, so if I had the chance to go and play football again, I could just go and enjoy it and and that's what happened, really. I was having a chat with uh, Tony Asgard, the sporting director at Dundee United. He said, obviously, everybody wants to see you scoring goals for Dundee United in the top flight. Now, far be it from me to play devil's advocate, but, you know, every player has his price. If somebody came in with that offer that Dundee United couldn't refuse, would you even contemplate it, knowing that you've got a baby on the way? Would you, If they said to you, look, we've got to accept this, would you be moving south or moving across Europe? Right now, I'm delighted that we've got promoted and we've got done United back to the Premier League. But in the future, I do, I do have aspirations to go and play and test myself as, as high a level as possible. And when that opportunity comes, if somebody comes knocking, then it would be down to Dun United at the end of the day. But I wouldn't say I'm desperate to leave. I'm, I'm happy here. And then, as I said, I'm delighted we're back in the top flight. And it's something for us all to look forward to. But one day, I would like to go and test myself and see how high a level I can play at. Yeah, well, that's good news because Paris Saint-Germain have just made a bid for you. It looks as if you're on your way. 
I'm on the next flight. Let me <laughs> let me let me talk to you about international football. The whole country is. Uh, do you get the sense that we're willing you to keep banging in the goals? Because apart from, you know, I'm not doing a disservice to too many footballers, but Lee Griffiths can score goals for fun. But we're looking for backup. We're looking for somebody to emerge. Do you feel the weight of the nation on you, or do you feel the goodwill? That's nah, it's all good. Well, if people are, are wishing you well, then you can need to take the positives for that because people are quick enough to criticise you when it's no going so well. So, um, that is something I enjoy. If, if people want me to do well, then it obviously helps me confidence wise. You look at Griffiths, the amount of goals he scored in his career, it's an unbelievable, unbelievable record he's got, and that is something that I can look to aim towards, hopefully. What's the difference between the club football and when you played international football, albeit the few caps that you've got? It was um, it's a, a few people have asked me that. It's hard to kind of put your finger on. There's there's probably a wee bit less pressure because you're surrounded by such good players in the team. I mean, it's something you can go and enjoy. The level of play that's round about you ideally makes your job easier, probably as a striker. So that was something I enjoyed. The obviously the Russia game was was a tough one for us. We done well up to a point, and then Russia obviously got the four goals, and it looked like a bit of doing, but. The first start of the second half, I thought we started that game well and I played myself into that game. So it's, it's a tough one to, to kind of judge us difference wise, you know what I mean? There's a confidence about you now. Do you feel confident that you can consistently make that step up to international level? Because, as you said, people will criticise, people will have their opinion. The biggest opinion seems to be they wonder whether someone at an Air United, at a Dundee United, and now a Dundee United in the Premiership, will be able to consistently make that step up. Do you feel confident you can bang those goals in for Scotland? If I'm doing my job for my club and consistently scoring week to week basis, then there's no reason why. And that's what you need to be doing. You need to be doing it for your club before you even have the chance to do it at international level. So, fingers crossed, I can keep doing that and banging goals in for United. And then if I do get selected to step up to international, I can continue that form there. Yeah, do you set yourself any targets this time around? I mean, you're going to come up against defenders who are going to give you a, 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 a rougher time than the, you would in the Championship, maybe. Is that fair to say, a higher quality defender? It will be. Obviously, the, the squads and that are, are much bigger than the teams. The clubs, no disrespect to the Championship, but the clubs are looked upon as bigger. So it will be a it'll be a tough season for us, but I'll just look to, to try and score as many as I can again. That's what I've done for the last few years. and. It's worked for me, so I'll just like to go and do that again. Yeah, Lawrence, listen, uh, keeping our fingers crossed that you are able to get to kicking a ball again for Dundee United in the new season. We're certainly looking forward to seeing you in the Premiership, strutting your stuff and banging in the goals. And then, of course, fingers crossed for Scotland. Um, it must be a great training programme you have at the moment because there's a baby on the way. You must be running about like a madman in there. It is. I, um, obviously, there's, there's not a lot you can do, but... Probably the excitement has gone for the shopping nowadays. It's no something I was used to, so the missus has got a break for it and I need to get myself to Asda every third day, so I'm enjoying that. <laughs> and the last point on this, a Zoom party is no way to celebrate a title. Have the boys organised another party? Definitely. I would all love to, to get together and celebrate eventually, but obviously there's, there's a lot going on in the world right now and <laughs> probably more important things than us meeting, meeting up to have a party, so hopefully... Eventually, when the time comes, we can we can go out and enjoy it together. But until then, it's just a case of everybody staying safe and hopefully we're all there in full health. Lawrence, I wish you ever success. Stay safe and well, and good luck when the baby comes along. Thanks for joining us. <sighs> hey, thanks a lot. You too. I like him, Ruffy. Um, I'd love to see him banging yeah. the goals in for Dundee United and staying in the Premiership in Scotland. Yeah, you you touched it right at the beginning of that interview. You know, it's, it's uh, a lesson to every kid out there who doesn't think they're going anywhere, uh, leaving a big club and going down the way. And he, he's done ever so well, you know, to get back to where he was. Uh, I mean, we at Partick Thistle identified that he was going to be that bigger player that we actually bid when we were right down there. We identified him as the guy who was going to get us out of the mess. And we actually physically bid the 170,000 one Friday afternoon for him. It never went through, but we actually saw that he was going to be the guy that was going to start scoring goals. And he proved everybody right, and, and, he, and he will continue to, because he looks as if he's matured as well. He looks as if 
you know, getting that Scotland cap will, will obviously make him a better player as well. Yeah, Ruffy, what do you mean uh, it never went through? Did John Nelms try and send it in an email and it just didn't get to the intended target? No, I think it was just uh, <laughs> no, it, it was uh, it was all done in writing. Everything I done. Oh yeah, lot. oh and, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, his agent advised him to sit tight for another six months, and uh, he would get a wee bit more money. Uh, good, good luck yeah. to the lad. You know, good luck to him. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing, Barry. I actually thought Rangers were going to nip in. When you think of some of the signings they've made, I thought he would have been ideal to go and, and make a bid for Rangers. Yeah, Peter, I've been impressed. As Ruffy says, after a difficult time he had at Aberdeen, he went down to League One, top goal scorer with Air United in League One, went up to the Championship again, top goal scorer. And I think he's done it the right way. He's went and moved to Dun United. A bit more pressure on him to score goals and he's delivered this season. And now the big test for the uh, for the boy is can he produce in the Premier League? And I think he can, Peter. Ah, I've seen him a number of times. I'm impressed with him. He's a natural goal scorer and it's a dying breed now. So good luck to him. He's done it the hard way and I expect him to do really well next year. Yeah, do you think he's listening to everything that Lee McCulloch is teaching him? No, because he's scoring too many goals. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like him, Tam? Yeah, Pierre, I think he's a, I think he's a tremendous striker. Um, it was interesting to, to hear him saying that uh, he'd done a, a personal training course because I think that's helped him massively. I, I thought he was carrying a little bit of weight when he was at St Mum uh, in Aberdeen. I think he's went down to League One. He's got playing every week. I think that was massive for him, playing every week. Ian McCall trusted him. He lost that little bit of weight he was carrying. He looks fitter, he looks leaner, he looks a yard quicker. Um, and he certainly paid off for him, Andy McCall, all the way back up. He actually reminds me a wee bit of Stephen Dobie. Stephen Dobie done the same. You know, I played with Dobes at Hibs and Dobes was the same. He, he was carrying a wee bit of weight. You know, he, he went down, down a couple of levels, got his head sorted, got playing every week, lost that wee bit of weight, got himself fitter and... And, he's, and he's, his career went through the roof. I think Shankland will do the same. He's matured, as, as Ruffy was saying as well, as a player. And uh, I, I really like him. He's all-round game as well, holding the ball up. Um, he's not just a goal scorer. He can do a lot of bits and pieces. You know, buys himself fouls. He's a clever player. So, no, I think he's got everything in the locker to, to go and do well for Dundee United and then maybe go down to England at a, at a higher level. I need to get a personal Another trainer, Ruffy. Peter. I need to get a personal <laughs> trainer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you know, uh, Peter, see when he got obviously called up, a lot of people were questioning that. He didn't look phased in the, in the international scene. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I was like, do you know what, I'm having that boy. Like him. So, I like him. I think he's got a big, bright future. And if he produces, he'll get that move again. Okay. Um, hi to Marie McKinney, who's joined us, Stephen McNamara as well. I must just mention my old schoolmate that I went to school with. Uh, he actually is always, for the last 12 years, he always gets the last call uh, to fill the last chair, Ruffy, uh, at the PFA Player of the Year Awards at our tables. You know him, uh, Jim Lennon. I want to give Jim a mention. Jim always comes in. He always thinks he's a late sub but I always have him at the table and he's just absolutely gutted uh, to to find out that obviously there's no PFA Player of the Year awards and, and he's now probably demanding uh, a place at our first staff party, Tom, if we, if we have any staff left by the end of this. <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> we're, we're, hanging, we're, we're hanging on by a thread here. Uh, so ho hopefully we're all still in a gig uh, when the season starts back. <laughs> <laughs> every, every day's an adventure. Every day, listen, we're trying. We're trying our best to to bring you football. If you can't get out, we try and give you a fix every day, Monday to Friday. Uh, and I'm going to read out as many names as I can. Please forgive me for this. Just before we go, guys, the answer to the quiz was 1994. Uh, the World Cup in 1994 was the answer. So uh, thank you very much to everyone who gave us the answer for that. Incidentally, Ruffy, it just gives you an indication of how the world is turning at the moment. Barcelona are going to let. Um, um, someone sponsor the new camp uh, and obviously the money that they, they get from that sponsorship uh, they'll donate to the campaign to fight coronavirus what a great gesture that is when you think of Barcelona uh, you know very rarely did they, they the, no sponsors then UNICEF was their sponsor on their shirt I mean class act 
Yeah, they are. They're absolutely magnificent. And, uh, you know, they've always been part of these kind of charities, you know, and trying to help people out. Mega money over there, but uh, just because you've got mega money, some people don't put it in the right uh, direction, and they certainly have over the years. They've been absolutely superb, and we, we've been to the stadium, and it's just a wonderful place to be at. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, David Hurst, uh, Mark Derrighetti, Mary McCormick says, great show once again, guys. Thanks, Mary. It's very kind of you to say that. Neil Thompson. Uh, also, Jerry McGurn says, can I get a shout out from Ruffy? Uh, because Friday, it's my birthday. I think it would be nice, Ruffy, if you could uh, say happy birthday to Gary. Gary, uh, happy birthday. Obviously, I hope you have a great day and uh, celebrate it uh, and just watch what you're doing. Obviously, sometimes you can get carried away in your birthday, uh, but enjoy yourself and uh, have a wonderful night. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I was, I was, I was just Brilliant. hoping for a happy birthday, not a, not a public warning. It's not exactly <laughs> Wagner, but he's up there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. he'll, be do, he'll be doing his own videos next to know yeah. Wagner. Hey, by the way, he's made some money with that, hasn't he? He's brilliant. Hi, hi, tremendous. Oh, he just sings away. Uh, hi to uh, Gary. Happy birthday to you, Gary, as well. Uh, Hugh, Ryan McBriarty, Chris Thompson, Doogie Little as well. Uh, thanks, Doogie, for the compliments to Barry as well, because I think, you know, whether you're a Celtic fan or a, a, a Rangers fan or whatever, Dundee United, Hearts, Hibs, you know, a, a good gesture is a good gesture. Um, and, and it's from the heart. And Barry to give that shirt away, which means so much to him, uh, you know, is absolutely amazing. Uh, I know that uh, yesterday's guest, uh, Tony Watt was going to put in a bid for it until, until he realised it was up at ten thousand. So he's now he's now put the squeeze on Barry Ruffy to try and, to try and get a lesser top off him. But nevertheless, uh, it's nice that everybody actually and Darren Young has joined us on the uh, the the show. Uh, now he's got a dilemma, Tam, and he posted on his Facebook today. Darren, his hair is all over the shop. I mean, it's a nightmare. He looks like our Willie. But his brother, do you remember his brother that played for Aberdeen as well, Derek? Derek, yep. Derek has shaved his head. Something that we're trying to get Barry to do. There's a campaign at the moment to get Baz to shave <laughs> his head and go back to the mental years. Money, money for but... charity. Yep. Get, get back to the yeah, head. Listen, <laughs> if, if, Ruffy, if Ruffy shaves his head off, I'll shave my head off. <laughs> no. Ruff, Ruff, no, Ruffy's going to shave the curtains off. No, shave the curtains no. off. There's, 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 more, there's more chance on, of me. There's more <laughs> No, there's more chance of me getting another pair of them. <laughs> Baz, Baz, that was such a great safety from you there. That means you're safe because uh -oh. there's no uh -oh. danger. He is shaving the mullet. <laughs> that is staying forever. Uh, anyway, listen. Join us if you can. Oh, no, exactly. <laughs> puts, puts the picture in your head, doesn't it? Uh, anyway, apart from anything else, to each and every one of you who is following us in the football show, we really do appreciate it. Each and every one of us, as Tam and Barry and Ruffy said, we are hopefully going to go as long as we can through the summer. Um, of course, with your backing as well, we'll read out as many of your messages. If you like the content, like, share and follow us. And over and above that, if you're on uh, YouTube, thanks to all the people who've been shouting down some of the dafties uh, that have been on. Um, nevertheless, you can subscribe to our channel. We can take the stick. We don't mind uh, as long as it's a bit of fun. Uh, join us on YouTube as well and subscribe. So stay safe, stay indoors, listen to the government and the health officials. They know what they're talking about. And we'll be back tomorrow. Myself, Ruffy, Tam Cowan will be joining us as well. And this week, I could promise you, he will not be singing a song. It's as simple as that. I'd rather have Ruffy singing something than Tam after last week's escapade. <laughs> so from all the boys, thanks for watching. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com.